This is a mini tutorial for the Skull and Roses cushion. You can find the links to the pattern below in the description. My son asked me to make this cushion for his girlfriend's birthday in April. It took us a while to decide on the design and then we settled on the Skulls and Roses. So I've had this in the background for a while. It also means I no longer have the cushion and as I wasn't making the tutorials when I designed it, I'm showing you the main parts of this pattern on a smaller sample. So let's get going. For the main body of the cushion, I used paint box yarns, cotton double knitting in pansy purple. The front of the cushion is a double crochet in UK terms or single crochet US terms square. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. So if I'm going to make a slip knot and chain 67. Take your time with the chains. Try not to make them too tight. I'm a very tight crocheter, so I have to really think about this. And keep your chain from twisting. So once you've chained 67, we're going to start our first row by going back the other way. And we're going to do a double crochet in UK terms or a single crochet in US terms in the back bump of each chain across. So we're going to start in the back bump of the second chain from the hook. Crocheting to the back bump of a chain takes longer and it can be a bit tricky to get the uh, back bump onto your crochet hook but I think it gives a much better finish along the bottom and makes it much easier to when you come to join the front to the back cushion. Um, but if you want to start crocheting into your chains as normal then that's perfectly fine. Continue doing your double crochet all the way across until you have 66 double crochet. Remember I'm just working on a sample so I've actually only got 30 stitches here but you need to have 66. When you get to the end you need to do one chain to turn and this doesn't count as a stitch and you're going to double crochet all the way back starting in the first stitch. Continue with your double crochet until you've completed 66 rows. Cut the yarn and pull through the last stitch and weave in all the ends. Then it's a good idea to block your square to 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. This will make the embroidery, which we're going to do next, much, much easier. It's now time to cross stitch the Skull and Roses onto the blocked cushion front. You'll need to print the chart from the pattern or have the chart up on a screen. The chart is made up of 65 by 65 squares, whereas your crochet square is 66 stitches by 66 rows. It's important to remember that the numbers on the chart are for the squares for the embroidery, not the number of stitches and rows. I'm working on a sample which is smaller than the cushion you're working on, but if I stretch it out you can see the holes which are the corners of the squares on the chart. If you need a more detailed and slower explanation of this, I have a step-by-step -step video in my Learn to Crochet course. The link is in the description below. You can count the squares on your crochet from the bottom left edge so that you can see the four spaces at each corner of the square. So you can count across and you can count up. I'm going to mark on my chart where I'd like to start cross stitching just here. I'm going to count up from the bottom, it's the 11th square, so I'm just going to write that on here to remind me, the 11th square. 
And you can tell by the numbers on the charts, but the it's also from the left hand side, it's the 32nd square. I now need to find this square on my crochet. So I need to count 32 squares, not stitches, from the left hand side and 11 squares from the bottom, not rows, up, up from the bottom. Now my, remember I'm working on a sample. Your crocheted front of cushion is a lot bigger than my sample. Now that I've found my square on my crochet, I'm going to start my first cross stitch. So I've pulled the needle up in the bottom left hand hole of the square and put the needle back down in the top right. And that's the first half of the cross. And I'm going to continue across doing half crosses from the bottom left to the top right. So it have to be done in this direction, but it's important to keep it in the same direction all the way over the cushion. So I'm following the chart here where I've got three crosses, a space, and then four crosses. I'm doing the first bottom halves of them first. This just, uh, just you don't have to do it this way, you can do each individual cross, complete it, but I'm just showing you this way on this particular demonstration. So when I, I've done the third one, now the fourth half cross from bottom left to top right. And I need to go back the other way to complete the cross. So from bottom right to top left. So that keeps, I want all my top half of my crosses going in that direction. So I just carry on back the way I came to complete those crosses. Just be careful of the my thread. I do lose my thread quite a lot um, when I pull them through. Leave the space as shown on the graph and then we do those last three crosses on that first row of the first rows. Now I'm going to check what I need to do next. So I'm going to go up onto the next row of this rows. So the first cross is the square before on the row above of the of the row above of the previous row <laughs> if that makes sense and I'm going to do two crosses here so I'm just going to do this part of this row with just the two crosses first so that I'm not having uh, I'm trying to think about not having too much um, threads going across at the back trying to keep the back quite neat so as there's a big gap um, until the next one on that row, I'm just going to do these two um, and then I'm just, because I'm towards the end of my thread, I might not get the next, all of the next row in. There's another two. We've stepped along again. I'm just doing the next two. And now I'm going to just finish, thread this yarn through or weave in the ends um, through the previous stitches because I need some fresh yarn to carry on. Um, I've some I try just try and keep it neat. Sometimes I only thread one way in a second direction, and sometimes I will do it three ways. I'm moving on to the next section of the rows. This is where I plan to go. So I'm carrying on with my thread, starting here, keeping the bottom halves going in the same direction, the bottom halves of the crosses and the top halves going in the same direction throughout. So I'm just following the chart. I'm just going to speed it up again as we get towards the end of the rows. Just the last few stitches to do. I'm 
and the first rows is complete, you'll continue on your larger square with the other two roses. So I've just joined some white yarn at the back behind that rose and I'm going to start on the first row of the lower jaw of the skeleton. So I've just worked out where that is in relation to my rose and then I can get started on my first cross. So I'm still keeping the crosses going in the same direction, although I'm working the other way this time. <laughs> so I'm working from top right to bottom left, but that first half of the cross is still going in the same direction as the first half or the bottom half of all the others on the roses. So I'm working across. and then we're going to be coming back the other way. So I'm just taking a few little shortcuts here by going in and out at the same time with the needle. Just make sure that you're not splitting the yarn with the needle so each hole at the corner shares yarn with another cross so you don't want it to, to split it as you pull the needle through. And with the white yarn <laughs> It does, because it shows up so well against the purple, you can actually see when the crosses are, are not even. So you can just try and even them up a little bit. With You don't want them to be tight, so just even up the threads. Once you've completed the skull, this is what it should look like, and you're ready for slip stitching. You need your crochet hook and the green yarn. Look at the chart to see where you're going to start and either start with a slip knot in the yarn or just pick the yarn up with the hook from the back of the cushion front. If you'd like to see surface slip stitching in more detail, see the link to my Learn to Crochet series in the description below. With a loop on the hook at the front of the cushion, insert the hook into the next corner of the square shown on the chart. Pull up the loop from the back and pull through the loop on the hook to create a surface stitch. Continue following the chart. I'm going to finish off this line of slip stitching. I'll then start the vein of the leaf and carry on with the stem. To finish the slip stitching, cut the yarn and pull through to the front. Thread the yarn on a needle and making sure the last loop is caught, push the needle back through the same hole. Weave in at the back. And your first leaf is finished. Now to start on the vein of the leaf and then you can just continue going following the chart until you've finished all the stems and leaves. The back of the cushion is two rectangles which overlap and are joined with three buttons. For the larger rectangle, chain 67 and work as for the front but for only 46 rows. For the smaller rectangle, chain 67 and work four rows as you did for the front. The fifth row is the buttonhole row. Chain one, which doesn't count as a stitch, then 10 double crochet. Then chain three, one, two, three, miss three stitches, and then continue with the double crochet to the next buttonhole. Row six, you're coming back the other way, and as you approach the chains of the buttonhole, so you're doing double crochet, you just continue the double crochet bit into the chains as well. So we're going into the chains. One, can be a bit tight. Two. Three. Then back into the double crochet of the previous row. 
My sample shows one buttonhole, but you should have three. Continue rows of double crochet until you've completed a total of 30 rows. Cut yarn and pull through the last stitch. We're now going to edge the bottom of this rectangle with black. With the right side facing and row one at the top, join the black yarn to the last stitch at the top right hand corner with a slip stitch. Can be a bit tricky again to get into that first stitch, especially when you're a tight crocheter like me, but I'm through now. And join that black yarn. And then once you've got that yarn to come through, I'm going to chain one and then do 66 double crochet across. And then you just cut the yarn at the end, pull through the last stitch and weave in the ends. I'm going to show you how I make crochet buttons. If you don't want to do this, you can use any buttons that are about two and a half centimetres in diameter. I'm using purple yarn as it shows up better on the video, although on my finished cushion the buttons are black. So we're going to start with a magic loop. There's various ways of doing a magic loop, but this is how I do mine. And I'm going to just secure it with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain three. So there's the slip stitch. One, two, three. And I'm going to do 11 trebles into the magic loop. Trebles are the UK terms, it's double crochet in US terms. And this is the eleventh treble. I'm going to cut the yarn and pull through that last stitch. Now with the other end where the magic circle is, just pull it really tight, as tight as you can, so that you don't have a gap in the middle. We are going to sti stitch that gap together, but first we're going to do an invisible finish. Thread the yarn onto the needle then you want to push the needle under the two legs of the top of the first double crochet of the button and then you're going to go back into the stitch of where the the last stitch so you create a V so it looks like a stitch at the top and it should look continuous you couldn't shouldn't be able to see your join and then you can weave in that end. So now we're going to give our button a bit more body and oomph by doing some surface slip stitching around the to make a little border. Um, I'm using black yarn on my purple button. On my finished cushion I had a black button with purple uh, slip stitching. So we're going to do slip stitching like we did before. I've just put my hooks between two of the trebles pulled the yarn up but you can use a slip knot just not pulling the actual knot all the way through then in between each of the treble stitches pull up a, the yarn and pull through the loop that's on the hook so that you're creating the surface slip stitch all the way round just before the edge but it gives it a little border So I've not done a slip stitch in over that last treble. I've cut the yarn and pulled it through to the front, threaded it on a needle, and now I'm going to go underneath the two legs of the first surface slip stitch, and then back in between the two legs of the last slip stitch to make another little V to join them up. And it should be 
a continuous line or look like a continuous line around the button. Then I'm going to just weave that end into the back of the button. I'm just going to show you the slip stitching again, slightly speeded up, but this time with the purple slip stitching on the black button. With the right sides facing and row 1 of the larger rectangle at the bottom, sew the buttons onto row 41 of this rectangle, lining up with the bot buttonholes on the smaller rectangle. Thread the long tail of one of the buttons onto the, your needle and then you can sew it into place where you've marked. So at the same time, if there's any gap where you've pulled the magic circle together, you can actually close this gap with a stitch as you sew on the button. Make sure you fasten off the end really well so that the button doesn't fall off. And then um, you're going to do that for three buttons and then you can see the top or the smaller rectangle will now button onto the larger rectangle to make the back. The two rectangles should overlap by 10 rows. With the wrong sides of the front and back of the cushion together and then with the right side facing you, join the black yarn to the bottom right corner with a slip stitch. Finish off this slip stitch, then chain one, two, three. This counts as one double crochet and two chains. Then one double crochet into the same stitch. This is just to create the corner. And then we need to do 64 double crochet, so you're going into the ends of the rows on the front and the back of the cushion to join them together. Then we approach the next corner. To turn the corner, so in that last in the corner stitch, you do one double crochet, two chain, and another double crochet in the same stitch and then you're working along the top of the cushion joining the front to back going into the um, the finished row the last row of the two two sides so it's a bit easier to see and join them together so it's another 64 double crochet Continue round until you get back to the beginning and then you're going to join with a slip stitch into the second starting chain to complete that border. Now don't fasten off because you're going to continue with the um, ruffle edging but you can see you've joined the front to the back. So we start with one, two, three chains and then we're going to do two trebles into that two chain space which is the corner. So in US terms that's a double crochet, it's treble in UK terms. And then into each double crochet we're going to do three trebles and this gives you the ruffled edging. So continue round doing three trebles into each double crochet. When you get to a corner you do three double crochet into the two chain space 
second one, third one, and then you just continue round. And then you come back round right to the beginning and I'm just in this video I'm joining uh, my last treble to the first treble with a slip stitch in the top stitch in the pattern it says join with an invisible finish it's your choice you don't need to do an invisible finish because we're going to be doing a double crochet to finish off in purple all the way round so turn your cushion round so you're starting on somewhere along the bottom edge and just join the purple yarn in any of the stitches along the bottom edge with a slip stitch and then we do one chain and then we're going to double crochet into the top of every treble crochet all the way round so when we get back to the beginning I'll do that last double crochet, uh, snip the yarn, pull through and I am going to finish this one with an invisible finish to get it to make it look nicer. Um, thread your tail onto a needle and as we've done before go under the two legs of the first double crochet not the chain pull it through and go back in the V of the last, the top of the last double crochet so that it looks continuous all the way round and then weave in your ends. And you've finished your Skulls and Roses cushion, well done. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial video. If you have any questions please see how to contact me in the description below. Happy crocheting!